hello, <laughs> since you're not saying anything. Are you, are you talking to somebody? <laughs> What's happening, everybody? What's Hi, up? peeps. What's happening? Uh, it's Sunday, Sunday live hall, our regular show, our weekly show we do every Sunday. What's happening right now? I don't know. My hair is all upside. What'd you do? I, I Why? Must have moved my head weird. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, anyway, welcome to the show, guys. Um, I'm Katie. This is Vicky, a.k.a. Victoria, a.k.a. Messy Hair, a.k.a. Uh, in inner and outer turmoil over the mess of our life right now. How do you feel about the condition of our house, a.k.a. my fiancé? How do you feel about our house right now? Um, <laughs> mm. Get, get for ready those for it to of you be like this for the next that do not follow weeks. us on um on facebook actually that you'd have to be a, a personal friend on facebook to know it or have see, didn't see the show last we week talked about last week yeah. um we are moving so uh we found that last week like, i've what? been living here for nine years and katie's been here for four and a half years of those nine with me mm -hmm. and um we currently rent well, the housing market is crazy pretty much everywhere in the country, but especially here in the Las Vegas Valley, well, this, where property prices have increased yeah. about 40% over the last 18 months. And this last year, we were like, you know what? We should we should think about like moving, like maybe buying a house. Because we'd always talked about like not, like kind of not wanting to buy a house. She's owned a house before. We were just kind of like, we don't need to, blah, blah, blah. But then last year, we we're kind of like, you know what? Maybe we should look into buying a house like this spring, which is like what's happening now. right now. Mm -hmm. And then the housing prices went through the roof mm -hmm. and we're like, well, that's not going to happen right away. Exactly. So we're like, oh, we'll just wait. And we knew we had a sweet deal here. I've been renting for nine years. Landlord lives in Canada. He's never raised my rent. Actually, he's raised it $40 in nine years yeah. and then apologized for six months because he's a good Canadian. And that's why I'm so sorry. Yeah. He's so polite and so nice. Uh, but in any case, he texted me a little over a week ago, almost two weeks ago and said, hmm, I'm not going to renew your lease. I'm selling. And I can't blame him. But panic ensued. Yeah. So uh, it took us about, it took us a week to find the property and it took us about five days to get approved. Uh, but we found a house. We found a house already. It's crazy because we were like freaking out because the seriously, the market here is so bad, you guys. It's really, really bad. And so we were thinking like, we're not even going to be able to find something, even though we technically have three months to look. Uh, but we looked right away last week. I think Friday we had narrowed it down to like 12 properties that we thought could work for us based on the size and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Saturday we went and drove around to all the locations, which ended up being kind of a waste of time because I think we only out of that drive around, I think we eliminated one property based on exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. The rest of them, it's like we still needed to look inside. So whatever. I thought it was kind of fun though. And then the, by the next day, I think half of those were eliminated because they, they were already rented. Tents, they were already rented. So seriously, it narrowed down fast. And so then this one was panicking. I was panicking a little bit inside, but I keep my panic a little bit on the down low because I don't want to add on to her panic. And we went and looked at one house that had a pool. It was Gross. awful inside, just awful. And then disgusting. Yeah. And then like, I'm, think about an episode <laughs> of hoarders after they clean the house out and it's empty, but it's still got all the scuzz everywhere in the room. And you're like, Bleh. Although that was the second one. The first one was like, it was kind of smelly, whatever. Then on, because of the holiday Mon weekend, we couldn't look at anything on Sunday or Monday. Because, so you know, the realtors weren't working on yeah. a holiday. Because So Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday, we, uh, we looked at two other properties. The first one was one really close to us. Had a pool. We were like, this would be awesome. Vicky was kidding, joking around that like we could just pretty much carry our stuff down the street. It's It was still like about a quarter, maybe half a mile away. So I, I would say maybe that wouldn't be a good way to do it. But anyway, I had a pool. It was the size we needed it to be. We went inside. That place was disgusting. Mm -hmm. It was like embarrassing. We couldn't figure out why anyone would even show the house. It had been on the market for like a month. Our realtor who is a friend of ours, because everything here, as far as rentals are realtor to realtor, you can do find some private rentals, but it's a little sketch and you, I, I wouldn't recommend it. So we, um, anyway, third house we looked at was exactly what we wanted. Beautiful location. Oh, for those of you that um, are in Vegas, I know there's a handful of you that watch this, like Susan, it's right outside Rhodes Ranch. Um, it's uh, southwest of, of uh, the 15. We're right now southeast of the 15. Mm -hmm. um, it's about equidistant from the 15, which is the main freeway and about equidistant from the airport from where we are now yeah. just just on the west instead of the east most of the places we normally have to go to regularly like 
certain casinos that we like, uh, downtown, uh, the airport, the bins, things like that are all like about the same distance. So it's going to be, it's kind of weird because even though we're 20, going to be 20 minutes from where we are right now, we're not really going to be farther away from certain things. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be in a whole new neighborhood with all kind like way more restaurants. And a Goodwill pretty within, much at the end of the street. Yeah, there's a Goodwill <laughs> right down the street within walking distance to our favorite sushi place, which we're really excited about because right now when we want to go, it's a 20 minute drive. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway. Uh, yes, to Susan, it'll be closer to you. So you, you will have to come to some meetups. First of all, huge space. Uh, here's the thing that we've talked about this before, and I know I've said it before for those of you that have watched it, I'm just going to run through this real quickly and then we'll get to our show. We'll but we've talked event. about that. We are, um, we have outgrown this house. We, we have about 2,400, 2,500 square feet right now. It's a, it's a three bedroom, two and a half bath. And by most standards, it's a very big home. Uh, however, it is not very big when you're running two large reselling businesses mm -hmm. out of it. So everything has infiltrated the house. Uh, and a couple of the rooms, and that annoys me to no end. And I know that you guys can identify with that because I know so many of you are living in the middle of your stuff. Uh, uh, but for me, it's like my anxiety is up to yeah. here if my living space is not clean. Um, and it can be clean, but it's cluttered. So in any case, this house, we've been talking about getting retail uh, warehouse space this yeah. year. She's my been plan, for space for like the last two years, probably, mm -hmm. if not more. Yeah, my plan was to get a uh, warehouse space this year. And warehouse space is at a premium, just like rental spaces are, uh, homes are for sale and for rent here in, in the Valley. Even though there is a ton of commercial yeah. space available, there's still gouging prices Which is weird. Here. There's so many empty places. However, um, the amount that I had in my head budgeted for warehouse space to get our house back is actually less than the cost of this new home. Uh, we're renting, by the way, we're not buying, and this is not the market to buy in. No. Our plan um, now is in two years. We're doing a two-year lease, and our goal is to, hopefully with the market, we'll be able to- We'll stabilize. Yeah, this is not the market to buy in. I, I'm not going to buy an overpriced house because of pressure and, and time constraints. That's not a wise mm -hmm. personal or business move. But we're taking, uh, it actually ends up being, this house is uh, about 3,200 square feet. We go from a two-car garage to a three-car garage. And um, there is way more space and rooms as far as office space for both of us. We both have offices, obviously, storage space, all that kind of stuff. So there's plenty of space She's for us. We have a lot of space. And because I'm not really hurting for space. Um, so I just need to have a room to put my inventory in and a room for my office. But Vicky's gaining. So the house we're in right now is like 2,600 square feet going to 3,200 square feet. Mm -hmm. Two car garage going to a uh, two car garage plus a third, like one of those ones where it's like separate, another, a third garage. Plus uh, there is another room in the house that could have been an office. It's a relatively good sized room, um, but we're going to use that as more space for Vicky. So we're actually going to move like her entire shipping station, all her shipping supplies in there, all of her staging stuff, which is what ends up happening down in our um, front room here is when she's staging stuff. So basically we're going to be able to get everything out of our main living area mm -hmm. and we won't have anything out and about. We won't have a, right now our, photo area is in our family room. And so there's always, our lights are always back there. So none of that's going to be. In I'm not going to have to hide things when I have a party or have friends over there. They're not resellers anymore. That's the thing. Yeah. You don't have to hide anything anymore. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm not going to have to drive to a warehouse every day and put on pants. Yeah. So everything is going to be under one roof the way it is now, which has been part of my hesitation in moving out and taking on the additional expense. Which I guess so, it's good that you kind of dragged your feet a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to, yeah, Vasquez Vintage Girls, we'll probably do some documentation and some mm -hmm. filming of some stuff, uh, packing, moving, rebuilding um, the warehouse space and the shelving and the it's organization. Gonna it's going to be a lot. So we'll probably do a little bit of filming um, to show people because people have asked before and people love organizational videos. Uh, and right now it's just been so packed <laughs> that we don't want to do that. It's neat. It has to be, but it's packed. Yeah. So I, after the initial freak out and the freak out waiting to see if we got the house, which is, believe me, that even the application process is difficult. It was like applying for a mortgage. On paper, we qualify for everything. There's no question. But I don't know how many people are applying for the same damn yeah. house. They don't tell you. So it's like, and then you worry, mm, maybe somebody's like anti-LGBTQ and they don't want to rent to us. And these are the kind of things that you have to worry about when you're renting yeah. a home. I don't know how we lucked out because we literally looked at three houses. The first two were no-goes. And the third one is the one that we, the only one we applied for and we're getting it. 
So I feel very, very lucky. I think part of that obviously is that we have the resources um, that we need. So we definitely are, we understand like we are very, very lucky to be in the position that we're in, that we're able to take this on. A um, lot of people don't have, you know, 10 to $12,000 just to move somewhere else. And I, and believe me, I understand that. And four years ago, I would not have either. We would have been screwed. Um but it's going to cost about ten to twelve thousand dollars just to get into the other house, as far as the first month, last month, all the different deposits and, and, and the movers. And However, um, this house, Tommy, I don't mind saying um, we're pretty transparent about everything else. Whatever, we're kind of open we were books. paying under sixteen hundred dollars a month for this place, mm -hmm. which we know is crazy. Uh, in these last, I'd say two years, he probably could have raised it by another thousand. We should have been paying, according to the market, we, we should have been, been paying, paying about like twenty five, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Vicky had kind of figured it all in to get warehouse space would have been about two grand. And so when the, you, when you count like all of the, uh, the, the space, utilities yes. and the space and the insurance and all the different coverages right. you have to have. And all, I figured 2000 was my budget, what I wanted to spend to get out of this house. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is less than that. Yeah, so so in looking, we were like, let's try and around the 3000 range. And we were really, we were really pleasantly surprised to see there actually were some options until a bunch of them started falling away and they were like, Oh no, what are we going to do? So I think it's about 30, it's 3,100. Yeah. 3,100 3, a month. Um, which is a lot to pay for a house. We it's, it, it is, but we kind of have to rationalize it and be like, but it's also our entire business. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, and it actually is the most amazing space. And the only thing that we didn't get that we wanted was a pool, but the houses that had pools were gross. And so you, we're going to have to get you a little pop-up pool mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to have to live with that for a couple of years. And and the neighbors are just going to have to look at my fat butt and my little pop-up pool. I'm sorry. <laughs> as far Above as, ground. So real quick, as far as when we're moving, we were wanting to do like April 1st, but with this house, they basically were like, it's got to be March 15th or no go. So we were like, okay, so basically we're not going to move on March 15th but we're going to basically have to pay for half the month. We're going to be paying for two houses and two sets of utility bills. But what it actually turns out to be better because we realized had we arranged for an April 1st, we would have had to do everything in, within a couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, and this way we have access to the new house on the 15th of March. Uh, we can go in, we can plot out where exactly everything's going to be and get a good feel for it. I can go in and build all the double racks on the walls um, of the garage for Vic Vicky to hang clothes on. We can get all of that ready to go. Um, and it, we're not going to be super rushed for time. And we even started packing yesterday. We did one, we, we, our plan is an hour or two every night. We're going to work on packing. We got the guest room, which is probably the easiest one in the house, minus my, um, my inventory room because everything's already in bins. But we're going to do a little bit every night and hopefully it won't be as bad. But it's going to be a nightmare. I mean, that's just the way it is. We have a lot of shit, guys. We've got 5,000, 6,000 pieces of inventory. We got a lot of stuff besides the stuff that we live with. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So um, yeah, it's going to be, we're getting a little in Intel pool too. Intex, I think is Intel, Intex. But yes, yeah, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. um, anyway, so there's there's the the tea, as they say. Man, um, though, we're, we're not excited about it, but we are and we aren't. And uh, I will say, talk to me April 15th. April 15th, when we're all moved in, all settled, and I have things hung on the walls and we it feels like home, I guarantee I'm going to be loving everything about it. Yeah. Her office, guys, is freaking amazing. She's getting the loft way, it's like twice as big as mine. Um, it's a crazy and nice space. And you're going to have a brand new background for all of our YouTube videos starting yeah. in a few weeks because uh, Katie's office is going to be too small to for us to do that. It's pretty cramped right here. I don't here think now. it'll be easy. It will be too small. It's just she's saying she doesn't want to do it anymore. So she can provide the space. That's fine. I'm getting an actual bedroom with a door that closes for, my, closes for my office. So I get to be in a cave, which is what I've always dreamed of. She wants more space with open light. I want a dark cave that I can hide in. Um, and Grizz can come hang out with me in my office now. So it's going to be amazing. So, and yes, Allison, there will be a peacock guest room. Listen, uh, this house is so big. I'm certainly not buying all new things for every room. <laughs> yeah. So yes, the peacock guest room will be available for your uh, staying pleasure. Still. Yes. That's what we, uh, that's what we packed up yesterday. It actually is that, that guest room. Mm -hmm. So <sighs> that's it. Uh, so just be prepared for there to be interruptions, further interruptions into our schedule, mm -hmm. because uh, as things get closer to when we need to move, that's pretty much what all our lives are going to be about. We like Vicky said, like, well, the, when we can go, 
I'm already envisioning like when we get to go look at the house and we can actually go in and have access to it for the first time since we went and looked at it. Um, we'll do like a walkthrough video and to kind of talk about, you know, maybe like a 15, 20 minute video of like the house and kind of show what we envision. So you guys can kind of see, and we'll do a few videos like that along the way to try and show you guys what's happening. But um we're stressed for sure. Hey, Nate and L, we're still staying here. We're only moving 13 miles away from where we live now. Don't yeah. worry about it. We'll still see you and we're still going to have our meetups. Uh, as a matter of fact, it'll actually just be um, better because this layout is more open and it's bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot more room for people. And we we like to have our, we do our monthly um, meetup in the home, in our home. There's more, wasn't one this month and there's probably not going to be one until the end of April is probably going to be what we'll do. Um, but all of it's going to, it's all going to work out. It's, you know, sometimes things, I know this is very cliche, but it is true. And I am the person that hates change more than almost anyone, but things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely is. Yes, Julia, it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, Vicky was kind of dragging her feet on the inventory thing. Um, even though, let me tell you every Monday without fail, I say, I was, I joke that there's like a 43 minute time period when she is demand, like uh, loudly proclaiming she wants to quit and hates her job. Um, because it's so packed, it's very difficult it's, for me to find everything, to find stuff even if I know where everything is and I do, it's difficult to find things because I need more space to spread out. So, uh, Susan, thank you so much for the offer. Uh, we love our local friends and we love our local friends enough that we will never ask you to help us yeah, move no. because I'm going to tell you, I will never help you move. <laughs> not sorry. She I'm always 46, listen. I'm 46 years old. I am not schlepping shit for anybody. She always, myself, she always right? says this and I, cause it makes her sound like such an asshole because the reality is no, she won't help you carry boxes. But if you ask her to come over and help clean up a house that after you've moved out, she totally would do that. She's just not carrying boxes. Whereas I'd be the one carrying the boxes, but yes, we, we don't, we're going to pay somebody else. Yes, to Susan, it. you can come by and bring dinner and, and like, or, or, or you know, a, cupcakes or something and come say hi absolutely there you go and and we won't even make you unpack or anything we so are probably gonna get a little bit of help getting all the inventory in the garage packed up because we've got we that's a whole other that's a whole other challenge because she's got she was like oh should we get some wardrobe boxes and i'm like for what so you can hang so you can hang 15 things in it for ten dollars like that's crazy uh because you just got the double racks and so you were just saying today like basically what is it? You use the um, dry cleaner. I'm gonna bags. buy dry cleaning bags and 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 uh, put like five to ten garments in each bag on their hangers, tie them in the knot on the bottom. Yeah, elasticize the hangers together so the stuff doesn't fall yeah. off the hangers. And yeah, we have a whole process for for moving that stuff in that inventory. We're gonna move ourselves because it's just gonna be it's a lot. Um, and I managed it coming from Oregon, and I have. A, uh, a method I use for moving stuff that normally is hanging without having to box or bag everything up. Um, and so I perfected that and what, so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah, exactly. Allison, pizza and beer is no incentive at my age. And Gail, I'm the same way. I won't help myself move. Like we're going to have to pack <laughs> up all this stuff, but I'm not moving it. Yeah. Nope. Uh, I, as I was saying, all of our friends are in their 40s and 50s and older. And although some of them have offered to help, um, I'm not paying you chiropractor bills, dudes. Like, come on. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, maybe we should get a bunk bed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, um, All right. Moving on. Moving on. Moving Let's on. Actually so, start our show at 220. Well, that was some big news to talk about. People, part of the reason why our tiny little tens of fans come in and hang out with us and, and watch our show is because they like to know what's going on in our lives. We can at mm -hmm. least tell them what's up. This is a big deal. All right. Um, so this is our Sunday show, Sunday Live Hall. We break it up into three parts. First part, we look at our real numbers for the last week, our gross sales across our different platforms. We break down the fees, cost of goods, shipping, all that fun stuff. Middle part of the show, we look at our sales highlights for the week, some of the cool stuff we sold, or maybe educational, maybe the mistakes. Um, and then the third part of the show, we actually look at stuff we picked up, which I bought some stuff online. You went to the bins twice. I, I went did. the second time with I you. I did. Um, so you've got some pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff, pretty high valued stuff that you found, which is crazy. Um, oh, Nate said I was a professional mover in my twenties. It was rough then. Imagine now. Oof. Yeah. I always think like the people who do it for a job, I'm like, why, why would you make your, you, you ruin you yourself move five days a week, 52 weeks a year. Like you're basically Oof. moving all the time. Oof. 
Although I'm sure they probably have some techniques that work a little bit better. That's than probably you. true. It's for, it's a young man's game. That's for sure. Not to say that women can't do it, but let, let's be real. Physical strength is, it comes to play. Uh, let's see. There was a question there somewhere. Um, yes. Oh, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Not a question. I wanted to comment on. Hi, John. Liz's husband, John, is, is listening in today. She must oh. be listening while they're driving back from ThriftCon. She was out like one of the kids today. Yes. Uh, out at ThriftCon. And anyway, I'm. Uh, I think she called it thrift pop or something like that. And I'm like, thrift pop? Is there something I've never heard of called thrift pop? <laughs> no, it's thrift con. But she did pick up some really cool stuff that I'm pretty jealous of. That um, you were going to. An amazing. Probably try to buy from her, I'm assuming. Well, I mean, no, I, she can sell those herself, but I can still be jealous of them. Um, anyway, so she got some really cool stuff and, and got to go m messing around in my world a little bit and mm -hmm. probably have some an interesting time with all the bros. Yeah. So anyway, uh, John, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm glad you're listening today because uh, we can't wait till we come and visit in October and um, our daily tidbits back and forth. I, I absolutely know that we're going to like you. <laughs> you might not like us, but we'll like you a lot. Yeah. Liz makes us laugh. Very true. <laughs> All right. So let's get into the first part of our show. Uh, we'll look at the our sales numbers for the week. I did okay. Like I got my little, my little, um, Sale EKG going on on eBay. Uh, Etsy, I don't know what's going on with Etsy. Etsy was, is, was not doing well for me this week. Um, so 19 eBay orders. This is up through yesterday, the 26th. 19 eBay orders, four uh, between Etsy and Thrilling. Only three Etsy sales, you guys. Insane. Like, I went probably... Four. That's my posh mark. My went posh like, has been in the crapper for me yeah. since they changed everything. Even though they say they changed it back, they have not. I'm going to tell you right now, there's something still effed up with their algorithm yeah i went like four or five days straight maybe even maybe six days straight of no etsy sales it was really really weird and then i finally like i it was so long that when i finally had a sale for like 35 dollars, i was still in the negative from like all my different fees and, lists and yeah. stuff <laughs> and i'm like oh that's fun because it kind of feels like you're just giving stuff away um, anyway, nothing on Instagram. 11 between Grilled and Mercari. Both Grilled and Mercari have been kind of chugging along for me. Mercari has been like steady. It's like I'm not making crazy money there, but it's been steady. That's a good week for you. Right? And so 34 total outgoing orders, $1,620.30 on eBay, $338.56 between Etsy and Thrilling. Sad, sad, sad. Uh, and then Grilled and Mercari um, together were $887 with 30, 344 of that being on Mercari. I'm telling you, like, it's like I always have stuff in, um, what does it say? It's like Kim, bite your tongue. I'm sorry to interject there, but Kim's like, sorry, Vegas, you're shutting down this summer. Greg's moving out. Greg, it's about damn time. Yeah, come on. It's about damn time to get your priorities in order and get back here. And no, he is not shutting down Vegas. Um, it's not going to happen. No, you're not allowed to. Um, all right, so my total gross sales, $2,845.86, so not bad. $133.36 for shipping. You can see the breakdown of my fees there. Cost of goods, $370. Net total sales, $2,003.08. So I was all right with this last week. Uh, gross average sale price, $83.70, which I'm very happy about. I like to hit 70 or above. And my net average sale price, $58.91. And Greg is right. He paid his dues. The Rona almost took him out for crying out loud. Yeah. He's not going to shut it down. He's not going to shut down Vegas. That's right. That's right. Um, he paid his reparations <laughs> to the Rona virus uh, gods. Okay. So let's look at your numbers now. Uh, so good week, which eBay would not be the reason why it was a good week. I'll tell you that. Uh, so again, cross post, cross post, cross post. I know we always sound like we are at this perfectly commercial, uh, both here and in the boss Facebook group, but I need to, I, I can't uh, stress or emphasis enough that the need to cross post your listings, whether you're using list perfectly or another service, I can't imagine why you'd want to use another service. However, there are other services that exist. Uh, cross posting and diversifying where you are selling your items is absolutely key in this business in this day and age. eBay was the only game in town for the longest time. And now that there are multiple players, you need to play the game better. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket, regardless mm. of what some YouTubers may say. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket because doing so is shooting yourself in the foot. Because if one of these baskets goes to hell in their own hand basket, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, you're screwed. Uh, and, and here's, I've been selling on eBay for over 20 years. eBay is representing about 60% of my income now, 60%. The rest is the other platforms combined. Mm. And if I'm spending two, 
maybe three hours a week on other platforms, period, the entire week, and I'm making close to six figures, uh, there is nothing unwise about that because it is not taking time away from my eBay business. Yeah. Anyway, absolutely. so I, I know I sound like I'm preaching, but I say this because I'm, I want you to succeed and I want you to do better. And if you're able to do better, that makes all of us happy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't do the show for money. Obviously, you know that we have a very small tens of tens following um, and, and we don't do enough with it to make it be money, a money maker. We do it to really help educate other people um, because we like that. We like being part of the community. We help. We like to help the community. So I had 25 orders on eBay. I had 16 orders uh, between Etsy, Thrilling, and Depop. So 13 were Thrilling, uh, sorry, 13 were Etsy, two were Thrilling, one was Depop. Uh, six Poshmark orders and five Macari orders for a total of 52 outgoing orders. Mm -hmm. 1641 and change on eBay, 1551 between Etsy, Thrilling, and Depop. Nice. 191 on Poshmark, 255 on Macari. Notice, if you notice my last two weeks on Poshmark, I've been around the $200 range when I generally do around six to $700 a week on Poshmark. So it has only been since they changed the algorithms. And I know they said they changed it back, but what nothing is? else has changed about the way I do business. So it's, it is what it is. Um, my total gross sales for the week is right where I want to be. That sweet spot between three and four thousand dollars a week. Thirty six, thirty eight, ninety, two ninety six in shipping, eBay fees, Etsy fees, Poshmark fees, Macari fees, all of that. Six ninety six, ninety nine. My cost of goods is always low because of how I get my items, mostly from the bins or from garage sales. Actually, I haven't done garage sales in a while, but mm -hmm. whatever. My cost of goods are low. One fifty eight. My total net sales just under twenty eight hundred dollars for the week. My gross average sale price was it's kick high. ass this week. Yeah, it's really good. Sixty nine ninety eight, and you'll see that it was due to one specific sale that really brought my ASP yeah. up. It's but my right. net ASP was over fifty dollars. Yay! Makes me happy. Yay! All right. So yeah, I think we did all right. We had an okay week. It wasn't bad. Uh, let's see. Has thrilling improved? Eh, thrilling. Eh. Yes, for me it has. Um, I will say having them take down all of my listings and redo every single one using my titles, uh, and making sure that my thrilling rep put the code in or uh, whatever they need to do on their side to tag my men's items as men's items has made a world of difference. I used to only send it over my thrilling uh, CSV once a month because I wanted to make sure that it, I sent over at least a few hundred listings. I have taken to sending over my CSV once a week or once every 10 days, giving me fresh inventory more frequently. Um, I think the combination of those two things has mm -hmm. helped. I've had, you know, I've, I've sold over $1,500 in the last 30 days on thrilling. So it's not quite where it was in the beginning but it's way better than it was the last two or three months yeah. so yeah all right so let's go ahead and look at our sales highlights you have some fun stuff that you sold i did so this was kind of fun Hold I on, let me oh. actually show it sorry you're, you're just like no sorry i was reading Pew! Oh, oh, Liz, totally. Liz and I could do SNL quality skits. Uh, we could have two microphones with each other and rant for hours, mm -hmm. days, really, honestly. Liz and I have, uh, I feel like Liz and I have very similar personalities about a lot of different things, although I'm a lot more neurotic than she is. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. What's this? Uh, okay, so this is this little silly thing. I showed it in... Um, in a hall a few weeks ago. It took me a while to get it listed. Uh, I paid about $4 for it at Savers. And it was just this little vintage. It's literally what you see there. It's a it's a potato sack with like a tail sticking out, made it look like it's a cat. And it has batteries and it like shakes and shimmies and kind of like vibrates across the table like a cat's going to Ridiculous. get out of it. Ridiculous. How much um, did you pay for it? I paid about $4. Okay. It sold within, within a month for 65 bucks. Mm-hmm. Not too shabby. 64 bucks, sorry. Plus, plus uh, shipping. It's and it's cute. not heavy. It's tiny. Mm -hmm. It's one under a pound, which is why it has the that shipping, because I use flat, flat shipping rates. It's cute. All right. First one for me is this awesome t-shirt. You just showed this, didn't you? Yeah. And I think I got, I, I actually think I got it. Mm, no, I did pick this up at yesterday's fits, but I paid like 10 bucks for it maybe 15 at the most, but I think I paid 10 bucks for it. And I listed this and like either the same day or the next day, somebody offered me $59 and it's like, I could have, I probably, I might've been able to hold out and sell it for the full amount, 
but somebody offered me 59. When I do offers on um, stuff like this, I will immediately usually offer like $60 and then I go all the way down to $50 for these price points. So somebody offered me 59 and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to take it. So it sold within a day, within less of a, less than a day of me listing it. Um, this was, I, I call these surfer t-shirts for lack of a better term, but they're kind of like that surfer, surf and skate uh, style shirt. And this one actually, you can see it's got the Hobie tag on it, which is a, a pretty really common surfer brand um, mm -hmm. of t-shirt. But it's just a cool geometric, cool shirt. Oh, we have a puppy. Uh-oh. I don't know how she got up here. <laughs> which one? <laughs> what happened? Ripley. Go keep going, keep going. I was like, what am I seeing out of there? The has, there has been uh, an escape. Someone, I don't know how she did that. Rotten. You used rotten. I was like, what am I seeing out of the corner of my eyes? <laughs> All right. Anyway, tricky, keep tricky, going. tricky. Anyway, I, uh, I paid 10 bucks for it and sold it for 59 right away. But I always pick up this kind of stuff. And uh, one of the reasons I'm super, super jealous of the t-shirt that um, Liz got today is that it's kind of a similar like surfer style, but then it's got little, it's actually got little skiers all over it. So it's like the best of, of both worlds for me. Um, anyway, all right, hold on a second. You got to show the baby. Why are you so naughty? Why are you so naughty? And now you're acting like you're not even like excited to see us. You're just kind of mm -hmm. like, it's like she knows she's kind of naughty. She total escape <laughs> artist. I don't know how she got out of the, her breakout area, but anyway. Oh no. Very, very naughty. We have taken some of the things down off the walls. And one of the things we had taken out of the room, the spare bedroom that's leaning in the hallway is a mirror. And I saw this reflection in the mirror. Something moved. I was like, what the hell is moving? <laughs> just it hopefully was, there's this, no, it was this little, little tail. Hopefully we don't find any surprise pee, -pee spots. Mm -hmm. Naughty baby. Um, okay, let's go back to what we we're talking about. And yeah, so I, I sell seriously, these sell pretty fast for me. Um, as long as it's got a cool look to it, interesting colors. Um, it really kind of, I feel like it almost doesn't matter. I'm selling them all the time anywhere from 50, 60, 70 bucks. So I don't know what to tell you guys, but you should be picking this kind of stuff up. All right. What do you got here? Uh, so this is something I picked up on our trip to California. It was just, I just wanted to reiterate that the 90s slip dresses are still hot. They are still selling. They're still going. Uh, and I do put grunge because this is the type of dress that someone would wear with a leather jacket and Doc Martens and some ripped fishnets. Uh, of course, you can wear it as intended, but it's all about how you accessorize. So this is a 90s. It's not the brand is nothing fantastic. It was just a really cool dress that I picked up at a thrift store. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it was under $5. I'm sure. Uh, and it sold within a week of listing for $79.95. Nice. With plus shipping. Plus shipping. Yes. Plus shipping. All right. Next up is this t-shirt. I've been selling a lot of stuff really fast. Um, this one I just got. This is one of the things I got from my uh, secret online. I'll call it my online honey hole. Um, and I just listed this and within a day, I think somebody offered 50 bucks. I went back and forth with them a few times and came down to 60. And once again, like that other shirt, I'm like, I already knew what price points I would accept. So when they settled up on 60, I was like, it's fine with me. I paid 10 bucks for it. Uh, got 60 for it. It's such a cool shirt. I think it's a really cool kind of like Jersey type shirt, but it's a, the Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort. Um, That's pretty cool. We'll do it on the skis from the 80s. So I, yeah. Easy, quick flip. I was happy about it. All right, next up for you. I got the, uh, these grouped into three. Okay, good. So what I wanted to say is you guys all know that I love blankets. Do not sleep on the linens aisles at thrift stores, at garage sales, at estate sales. Make sure you're buying these good blankets. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say the brown and white blankets with either deer or eagles made by Beterlack and sand markers are the most popular. Also lions, that's another one. Yeah. The brown and beige ones, the reversible, they're the most popular. They're the most common. You're not going to get quite as much for them unless they're a king size. This is not a king size. This is like a full size throw. It's not even a, a like bedspread size. But this one I paid probably four or five dollars for. Actually, I got this at the bins. So yeah, probably yeah. five dollars because it's like less than two dollars a pound. And this is just under four pounds. Um, and this sold within a week, a week and a half of being listed. Not it bad. sold for $89.95. And that's the lower end of what I'm selling blankets for. 
plus twelve seventy five shipping. Plus so twelve seventy five shipping because it fits in a blank. It fits in a box. Mm -hmm. All right. So next blanket. This one actually sold on uh, Etsy, as you can see there. And this is another one. When you find the ones that are colored, that's when you want to sell them. This, the colored ones are the ones that are going to sell for the most money. This one is actually a full size as well. It's not a, this is like a true full size comforter because it would hang over on the sides mm -hmm. um, or, or, or blanket or however you want to put it. But this one it has a loose thread that, that I showed and the... Um, the tag. This is an original San Marcos. The San Marcos San Marcos blankets that are made in Mexico are the most desirable, and they're also the oldest. Mm -hmm. So this is also a uh, a bins find. Now the linens in the bins, I, I can spot a beater lac or a San Marcos blanket from across the room. So um, this again, this probably four or five, maybe six dollars at most. Uh, this sold within a week or two. They all were listed at the same time. I tend to list similar items at once. And I listed all of these blankets within the last two weeks. And all three that we're going to show you were all sold mm -hmm. right away. All right. So you ready for the big one? This is the biggie. Okay. So this is the one that I showed in a haul. I've actually talked about it a couple times. This is the one, as you can see from my photos, by the way, people like freak out about making blankets look nice. I, I lay it on the clean floor and, and crop it. I mean, that's, it's really hard to take pictures of a blanket. Mm -hmm. um, so this one uh, I paid $6.99 for. I picked this up in California as well. And uh, I this did roll into a sale that I started in my Etsy store. Unfortunately, it probably would have sold for more had I thought to exclude it from the sale because it sold about three days after it was listed and it went into the sale. It sold for $520 plus shipping. Uh, and I think it probably would have sold for more. Yeah. Good deal though. Nice work. All right. Next up is this National Air and Space Museum t-shirt. I love all the spacey stuff. I think it's cool. Outer space planets. It just looks cool. Um, and, uh, I've had this one for a little while. I paid like 20 bucks for it, but sold it for the full price. You see there, I've had a, a few full price, uh, sales recently on eBay, 97 99 with free shipping. So definitely a really good sale. I will say my eBay has been so much more active over the last like four or five days. So it's been nice to see stuff happening. Um, I will say today I got an, a really good offer on a t-shirt that I had listed for, I have it listed for like 300 and they offered 200, which I was very happy to accept. And let me tell you, I'm so over them not having to pay when they make an offer. I know it's in the process of changing. And I know there's people out there who are like, oh, eBay's got this switch and they're making it so people can't make offers. So they put their, their payment information in and I got to turn that switch off because then you're not going to get any offers. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want any offers anymore from people who are paying. I'm sick of it. It's like, I accept this $200 offer. I'm like, fantastic. And now I'm like, I don't know if I'm even going to get paid for it. If you're a serious buyer, you're not going to be worried about putting in your credit card information yeah. and storing it on file because you have to do it on every other damn platform yeah. in the world. I don't so. want your offer if you're not paying because now this, now that item is not available in my store for as long as I'm waiting for it to be paid for. And it's annoying and I hate it and I'm over it. So that's just my little mini rant because I was really happy to have a good sale. Oh, and, Katie you know, wanted to get in on the rant too, Liz. Yeah. So. Well, I am. A, hey, I'm a ranter too. Okay. Okay. Maybe I rant about different things, but I have my things to rant about. Um, and that's one of them. So I'm just like ready for that to be completely over. Although I, I am flabbergasted that now there's people who are upset that they're making people put in their <laughs> I'm like, how are there, how are, how is it like now there's going to be something else for them to bitch about, but whatever. <sighs> it is what it is. Uh, all right. Next up for you. Ooh. So this is the other thing I talked about. Do not sleep on the old kind of skeevy stuff from bathrooms, vintage stuff from bathrooms. Uh, this sold about three or four days after it was listed. I paid $2 at an estate sale in uh, California. Mm hmm Sold for $120. I had a buyer message me the night before and ask, say, uh, will you take $40? Because that's about what their going rate is. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not accepting offers on this. And uh, it sold the next morning for full price. Didn't the guy say like he offered you $40 and so that's all you're going to get? 
No, he he offered me forty dollars and said that's what it's worth. Like I oh, just okay, said. that's what it's worth. But how do you like? Okay. And then I the next day I hadn't replied to his message, and the next morning after it sold, I sent him a message because I just wanted to be one of those people like a big old like, you. Drive it in there. I kind of just replied to his message and I said thank you for your interest, but it has sold at my asking price. And he's like, whatever. There's a sucker born every minute. I'm like, yeah, okay, enjoy your kink, weirdo. But whatevs. <laughs> uh, I didn't say that, but that was what I was thinking. Listen, kinks are totally okay. Just don't be a jerk about it. Why you got to be a dick about your kinks, man? Like, come on. Uh, all right. Anything else about this gross thing? Nope. Okay. It was clean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of selling things for my asking price on eBay, um, I was really excited to sell this. So I had picked this up. I mean, I paid like 30 bucks for it yesterday's fits. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to list it high. And then like at the time, I think there were a couple of other ones out there that weren't listed very high, which I thought was a big mistake, but whatever. So I probably had this for at least six months. I wasn't going to lower the price though, although I have sent out multiple offers for, I think as low as like 125, but it's just a really cool uh, t-shirt for this um, Dark Shadows, the show. It's like a gothic soap opera. And uh, I had it priced at $209.99 and somebody bought it straight up for $209.99 and I was super stoked about it. So I'm glad I held out because it was just a cool piece to have in my inventory and I got what I thought it was worth. So I was pretty stoked about it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what those same people that don't want to put their credit card information for offers the same people that can't understand why a mortgage company asked for their bank information. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just the way it's going with all the different uh, platforms. It's like, I, we're not at a swap meet. Like, we're not, we're, we're just kind of going back and forth talking about numbers. Like, we're trying to, we have businesses here. We need to sell our stuff. And that baby's falling asleep on you right now. Mm -hmm. Why is she so cute? Hold on, I got to show her. Look how cute she is. She's got her little sleepy eyes. She's looking at me with her little sleepy. Don't worry, baby. I get to hold you in a minute when your mom shows you stuff. Shows us stuff. Mm -hmm. Why is she so cute? This is what we do 75% of the time that we're at home, or at least I do, is we just stare at her and say, why is she so cute? Why? It's true. <laughs> it's clearly what people do when they have babies, too. Uh, I mean, I remember. It's been a long time, but I remember what we did. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up for you. So these did take a while to sell. I'm not going to lie. I got these at the bins in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. That's last spring. year. Last spring, maybe? Well, yeah, it was after. It was so it's been almost a May. year that I've had them. So probably 10 or 11 months. And they sold for the... So I paid, what, $2? Because the bins there are even cheaper than they yeah, are here. Yeah, probably 2 bucks. I probably paid about $2 for these because they're just over a pound. Vintage, made in the USA. Christmas green plaid. Sold for two ninety five. dollars Went to eBay's authenticity. Already passed the authenticity. Have already been delivered to the buyer. Yes, I did clean them, but these are old. So the yellow uh, is is just from discoloration on the sole that happens. And mm -hmm. uh, there are people that know how to clean those. And and actually, the, the Vasquez Vintage girls may. may but um, I, I don't put that much effort into my stuff because I don't need to and I don't want to. What is this here? Do, do they put that, that in there? Yeah, eBay puts that into your item. I was like, item, what, I was like what's happening here? If it's a pair of sneakers that you're selling, an authenticity gear. I saw this actually after huh. it sold. It's inserted into your thing that that's tells cool. you what it means. Um, that's cool. I like it. Yeah. So those took quite a bit to sell, but I'm totally okay with that. They've been authenticated. They've been sent. So the buyer can only return them. Maybe if they say they don't like them, I suppose they can still return them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I think my photos are pretty clear. They're not perfect photos either. Well, and I don't look at this photo and think like, oh, these are amazing brand they're new. Not, they're, they're like not pristine. And... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. No. All right. Quit looking at me. You're too cute. All right, next up, uh, this one. So this sold, and I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen. Something sells, and then you realize you totally spelled it wrong in your title, and like people probably couldn't even find it. Um, yeah, I know how to spell Niagara Falls, guys, but apparently I didn't. I have like two other things in my store that are Niagara Falls T-shirts, and they're spelled correctly, but apparently I spelled it wrong here, and I'm like, oh, maybe this would have sold a little faster had I spelled it correctly because it was spelled wrong on eBay and Etsy, and Grailed, and Mercari, so it was spelled correctly on Thrilling, so whoever made, I will say. That Somebody corrected it. your spelling error. <laughs> I'm like, come on, how stupid is that? But I still sold it for $62.99. I paid like 10 bucks for it. Um, nothing crazy, 
Uh, but I just wanted to, I wanted to share that because I'm sure I've had that happen before or on something like that was even more expensive. And I was just like, oh, why am I so, so stupid? I'm so dumb. And then that's how it was. He's a dumb. Yeah. What you got here? I think I showed another sale from this collection uh, a few weeks ago. I've had them literally for about two years. Uh, I don't know why they're suddenly selling. Maybe there's some new popularity. Maybe this set and this pattern has been shown elsewhere. I don't know. They were all, they've always been rare. It's not new that they're rare, but um, I paid, you know, maybe a dollar or $2 a piece for several pieces. I think I just have the cups and saucers left at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and I sold four soup bowls for $80. Uh, Franciscan Ware is probably most uh, recognized by the Desert Rose pattern. That's the pattern that you see a lot of places at estate sales and things like that. This is a more rare pattern, but just as pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, 80 bucks. I was quite happy to sell them for $80 plus shipping. Yep. Very nice. All right. Next up, I have this Lollapalooza t-shirt. So I got, I've had this for probably about a year now, I think. And I've got a bunch of other uh, t-shirts um, from all from yesterday's fits, but they got them all from the same guy and I've sold a bunch of them. I think I had one or two. I've had a couple of other Lollapalooza ones that were black. I believe that I sold forever ago. This one's been a holdout for whatever reason. I had a price really high. You can see I had 350 there and I think it was, it had come down to like 300 using the smart pricing. Yeah. Uh, 299. Um, but obviously I've sent out like uh, plenty of offers on like eBay and stuff like that. And so somebody come messaged me and said, would you take 150 for this? And let me tell you, you know, there's times where, you know, it's really annoying when somebody like quote unquote lowballs you or whatever, but there's other times where I'm like, I literally paid $30 for the shirt. And so when he said 150, I was like, hell yeah, sounds awesome. I've had it for over a year. And I even replied and I said, yeah, I've had it for a while. That sounds great. Let's do it. And so I, I sold it for 150. So I don't think that automatically, just because somebody only offers you 50% of what you have a list for, you, it automatically has to be like, I guess what I'm saying is don't hesitate to offer lower prices sometimes. I'm not saying $2 on a $200 thing, but sometimes oh, it's been there for a while. I had a $15 offer on Depop today on a $400 sweater. Right. So now that's stupid, right? Like, bite me. But I don't think offering 150 on a $300 item is the end of the world. And in my case, I was like, I will happily take that amount. It's great. I paid 30 bucks for it and now I've sold it for 150. So it was a nice little sale. Um, so it's not always like the end of the world. All right. Next up for you. I've had this one for a while. I actually can't remember where this came from, but I think it may have come as part of a, a huge bulk purchase that I did from an estate sale uh, through with my friend Sally uh, in St. George, mm -hmm. Utah. So if that's the case, I've had it for just over a year, maybe almost a year and a half. It was October of um, of of 2020 when I when I did this. So I have like I think I paid pennies for everything, maybe a dollar into this, um, and it sold. This also actually went international. Uh, so I made a little bit of money on shipping as well. So it sold for 104. Uh, it's a creepy clown costume from the sixties. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I love old handmade costumes. All right. So Lisa wants to know, um, can we talk about how you price your stuff after you've researched? Mm, you want to talk about you or me? Um, okay. Well, I'll say for me, I mean, I have, okay. So some things, depending on what it is, there might be that exact same shirt out there. So like I was saying that dark shadows t-shirt, that same shirt is out there when I listed it. I think there was one other one. Um, and kind of the way I look at it is I have in my mind, like, I think this is a special piece. So I know that I'm going to price it up and I'm going to assume, okay, this other one's a little bit of a different size than mine. This one, they don't offer returns. Maybe they don't ship outside of the U S and so for a lot of times I'm just like, I'm going to price whatever I want. But then like today I, I listed a piggly wiggly t-shirt. Let me tell you, there's a million piggly wiggly t-shirts out there. It's not special. It's vintage, but it's not special. So I priced it like 40 bucks, still probably more expensive than other people have. But I'm also well aware that the market is telling me it's nobody's going to pay a crazy amount for it. Um, but I have stuff all the time, like that Lollapalooza t-shirt. Yeah, I priced it at three fifty dollars at first because guess what? There's not a single one out there anywhere that looks like that shirt. Um, it was it was made for a specific date, a specific event that was very limited. 
and not just Lollapalooza, but a specific like the party bus or whatever. And so I priced it up really high to see if somebody who's like a hardcore cr- a collector would get it. So what about you? I think it's too complex to get into in the middle of our show, but um, I, I will say that both Katie and I price our items very high. Um, because we sell primarily vintage items that can't really be comped because there are very few, if any, items that are exactly like them, I will price my items at what I think they're worth and what I'd like to see realized as a price. Mm-hmm. And um you know, obviously there are some things that are hardcore comps. And if there are hardcore comps, I'm going to price at the highest end of those comps, if not the highest comp plus 20% right. every time. Uh, if if it's something that uh, can't be, I don't look up comps anymore. Part of it is, uh, you know, unless it's something like a board game, which is very easily comped because, you know, it's it's a commodity that's, it's common. Um but clothing and shoes and vintage items, nobody is, for what I sell, nobody is going to have the exact same item in the exact same condition in the exact same size. Nope. And I think my items are of good quality with good photos, good listing practices, good descriptions. So my stuff is always going to be priced yep. high. Uh, I'm not racing to the bottom. Everything that I sell is vintage. I only have about an 8% sell-through rate monthly. But I have over 85% sell-through rate if you look at overall yearly. I sell Mm. through 85% of my stock. I don't look at things on a case-by-case basis. If it takes six months to sell something that I paid $3 for and I get $200 for it, I don't care that it's taken six months. Because I constantly have items that are selling that are in various stages of how old they are. Well, I so as a vintage seller, it's an entirely different type of business strategy than somebody that's not a vintage seller. Yeah. It's I think it, it also just depends on like what your model is going to be. Some people would rather sell faster and flip through it and they have more access to inventory and they'd rather hustle in that way. We just both with, even though we have separate businesses, we're both pretty much on the same page where we would rather not do super high volume, but have higher prices. And so we know that that means it might take a little longer to sell and that's just, that's okay. Yeah, um, as, as Allison says, setting a competitive price isn't what it's about when you're selling vintage items or quality items. If you're selling a mall brand, you know, American Eagle, certain style pair of jeans, that there are 500 of them in that size with that style, that's an entirely different pricing strategy than if you were selling one of one yeah. or now, one of two. That is going to impact where you go with your business in the future because, like, Vicky has been struggling with space for the last couple of years. So, you know, could she have lowered her prices, increased her volume, sell through and mm-hmm. pared down her store that way? Sure. But that's not what she wanted to do. She wants to go for bringing in more stuff and having more space. Yeah. But that's her choice. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, uh, I had somebody reach out to me and wanted to do a bundle deal. And so I've had this happen so many times. I tell them a price and then they either ghost me or they say no thanks because they're looking for wholesale prices. Well, in this case, that was not true. And if you guys remember last week, um, I actually showed this T-shirt. So this was one of the ones, the Sharpie Mm -hmm. T-shirt. And so they wanted to know what I could do for these three T-shirts. I think I had this one listed for 100. This one was listed for like on on Grail for 55. And this one was listed on Grail for 55. And so they were in Canada. I ended up doing all three for 195 shipped to them. um, Which I think was a fantastic deal. I probably paid... $30 $30 total for uh, all three shirts together and flipped them for $195. So I was super happy about that. And this is what I do when it, I think this is the easiest way to handle bundling um, for Grailed rather than having them send me uh, offers on multiple things. I just grab a picture from each item, make a really quick listing with the price that they agree to, and then have them buy it from me. And I think it works out really well. Um, and then it's all under one, one thing, but obviously you can do it however you want. So Mm -hmm. Um, but I was actually pleasantly surprised how fast I sold my Sharpie t-shirt. I think it was a pretty pretty cool cool one. So one ninety five for those three shirts. And what did you pay for each of them? 30 total, about 30 total. That's pretty damn good. Pretty dang good, man. And this one I've only had for, I don't know, a few weeks, not that long. Electrifying lady. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. What's this? Uh, and this was a, a good Macari sale that I had. I actually found this at the bins maybe six months or so ago, maybe a little bit more. I found uh, one by head, the brand head. And then I found a different one. I think that was Obermeyer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Both of these I purchased and, um, you know, from the bins and so it maybe like two, three dollars. And I got an offer for this yesterday for a hundred and four 
dollars. Well, right there, why you yeah. say it's so slow? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I know I'm laughing. I, your other mom was very funny. Um, it's very cool, man. I like it. I like it. All right. Last item. If you are in the boss Facebook group, I'm not going to get into the whole saga of this tale, but if you're not in the boss Facebook group, you should join the boss Facebook group just so you can read the saga of Katie um, working over her buyer. Yeah. On this particular. So I had sale. a guy reach out to me starting on the 5th of February. It literally took him 17 days to close the deal. 17 days, you guys. Um, I keep it short and sweet with people when they're asking me questions, particularly when they're, they make it very clear up front that they don't think my item's worth what I have it listed for. And he kept demanding to know what, what made it worth so much, which I would just ignore every question because it's like, I'm not, it's not my job to explain to somebody why a vintage t-shirt is worth money, but over these 17 days, we became friendly with each other because <laughs> Vicky laughs because I was enjoying torturing him. The banter, the banter is He hysterical. literally would like go four or five days and then start it up all over like, again. Bro, and it was just bro, ridiculous. Bro, why is why is this price so high? It's literally just a yeah. t-shirt. I had made my bottom price. It was already down to like 169 through smart pricing. Um, and so when he originally had asked, I basically had said, like, if somebody asked me what my lowest price is, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to stick to it. And I would say probably eight times out of 10, when I do that, it actually, I actually do end up selling it. And for the price that I asked for, because it drives me crazy when I say my bottom price and then they keep going back mm -hmm. for lower prices. But anyway, so my lowest price was about hundred for 17 effing days. And, but he did entertain me enough that eventually I said I would go $90 only because I was enjoying the abuse I was able to pile upon him. But you should go check out that post in the Boss Facebook group because I think it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. And that, the only thing left is for him to receive the package with the abusive note I sent him, which is also in the, my post in the comments. And I'm excited to see how he feels about me calling him names and basically... Um, <laughs> It was pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So I did sell it for $90. Katie will occasionally post these things on Facebook. She usually puts them on her personal Facebook page or she posts them in our admin chat where she talks about, because she deals with a lot of douchey bros because of what she sells. So the comments and the messages back and forth are quite comical. And her responses are quite comical because she just doesn't DA give a, no. anyway. So it's pretty funny, uh, but she doesn't always post them in our group. This one, I was like, you really need to post that one in the group because that's pretty, yeah. that's really funny. <laughs> It was well, and it's funny. Yeah, seriously, uh, Paula. The, he, you know, he proved himself not to be so douchey until the end, after the sale was done, and he told me what his name was. And so then I responded with uh, Katie here, and then he was like, "Oh, wait, you're not a dude. I totally thought this whole time you were, you were a dude." And then he was like, "I'm really impressed now," which is kind of like, "What does that even mean?" Because, um, how, you know, A, you're a chick selling this type now, of clothing. I totally get that it is a male-dominated B, um, you're, you're, a, you're a chick that was able to banter back and forth with a but dude. Yeah, that like, part. Like a dude, I that guess. That part, like, listen, I get that the guys do definitely dominate the whole vintage clothing street market. Street scene. Streetwear scene. I totally get that. It is a fact. But I also think that it's absolute bullshit. That it's like uh, a woman can't be like what can't like happy by the balls and like basically giving you shit for 17 days straight. Like, sorry, I don't know. It's, it's dumb. It is dumb. I LOL'd at it because it's like, what else am I going to do? Um, go crazy on him. But that's why I just called it. That's why I told him he was a jackass in my letter to him. So <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's get into our haul for the day. Yes. Hauls for the week. So, um, now Katie is holding Ripley because I'm going to mm -hmm. uh, show you some of my fun stuff that I got. I did make two trips to the bins this week. I went once with my friend Corey and on um, Friday, and then I went Saturday morning with Katie. I was like, I had gotten some good stuff on Friday, but I didn't feel like I'd gotten quite enough stuff for the week. Um, and I didn't have a lot of good things to show in the hall today. So I was like, mm, let's she, just go again Saturday morning. I'm telling her she really needs to start going minimum two times a week because she goes for a couple hours and fills up a cart and there's always multiple items that are hundred dollar plus items mm -hmm. it's like you have an endless supply of i do and i have a, and i have a really good eye and i and i know that so i you know i do pretty well it's just a matter of getting caught up and getting everything listed as we all know that's the map that's the deal right um being able to stay on top of it and and not end up having just a whole huge death pile which i don't it's not that big mm -hmm. um anyway so some of the things i picked up this week and and i wanted to talk about i pick up shoes i do buy shoes at the bins 
And because I'm not looking for these brand name shoes or like all the Nikes that in the um, streetwear shoes that all the people that dive into the shoe bins are looking for, I tend to walk away with a lot of really good items that nobody else is looking at or looking for, right? But my items are going to sell for more than theirs most of the time. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things I picked up. I picked up uh, a pair of um, Sonia Reichel, Reichel uh, shoes. I'm trying to see it. See, there's the brand right there. Uh, made in Paris. Not a brand that I was familiar with, but I saw a Paris leather. They looked good. Um, and they're just these slides, leather slides that have these super cute little um, like enameled things on the front this little kitten heel. Um, so these retailed for over $300. So I'm probably going to sell them for like 75 or so. They paid $2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allison, I think that'd be really great to take uh, Mike with Vicky to the bins. The only thing is a lot of times- Mikey and I are going to the bins next week. A lot of times they won't let you film in there. So he might have to figure out how to rig it and have like a hidden camera because they usually- for whatever which is dumb it's like who cares like i am uh i am i am supposed to hit okay. the bins with mikey this week i think or next week i'm not sure yeah. but at some point soon who knows how much he'll, um, content he'll be able well he actually. he was he did film a little bit with sunny last okay, week, good. last week which is part of the point um but we go at different times too so i'm always there when with when the day starts i'm sure mikey could be too but we'll see um uh, we've talked about going together a couple of times. Anyway, uh, I also picked up these fantastic um, vintage like mox moccasin boots with these different colored um, fringe leather tassels. And they kind of have a like a little bit of a Native American, you know, print on them, obviously. And it's got the suede on the top. These are so fun. They're very hippie-ish, even though I think they're probably closer to 80s, maybe even 90s. Uh, the brand is... LJ Simone from New York. So I don't know if it's uh, 80s or 90s. I'll do a little bit more deep dive for the decade. But either way, they're kind of timeless and they certainly work now. Um, they're a really fun, fun boot. If, actually, if these were closer to my size, I could totally see myself wearing these. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Crystal saying that uh, us moving to Southwest means that she has an excuse to go to the bins now. Yeah, because I think us, the new house is like 40 minutes away from where Crystal lives. And she comes every week to drop off and pick up stuff for, for Vicky. Um, but I think that's a good idea. If you, if you like coincide it with a trip to the bins every time, then it's like, at least you're, mm -hmm. you're not driving all that way from just this one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another pair of boots that uh, they're like little, these are definitely nineties booties with the little um, buckle slip on heel these are leather and suede and they also have a native american style i would say these probably all came from the same person's closet um with the it's this is all like a all different leather like applique with some beading and stuff they're just they're really pretty they're really cool that whole southwestern look uh it's a beautiful native american uh, i think princess yeah princess on the front and she's just really pretty um i love them again not something that is going to fit my fat feet but i love these boots um also probably will get the about 75 to or maybe even over 100 dollars for these they're mm -hmm. just a really cool boot um and then also from the 80s i picked up three or four pairs i'm only going to show two but uh, we've got some vintage um, Stuart Weitzman. Stuart Weitzman doesn't do quite as well as it should because it is a very high-end shoe, but also the quality and the construction and where they're available has come down a lot lately. But the earlier 70s, 80s, and even 90s shoes were really, really well made. And this, uh, this is just a pair of classic black pumps, but they have gold like chain all the way around the back, the back Fancy. and the bottom. So I think these are pretty funky looking, like very dominatrix Ooh. from um, from the 80s. If you want to be a little naughty in your formal wear. Yeah, I think they're kind of sexy. So, um, and they're in perfect condition, even the heel. Uh, I will not pick up a shoe that doesn't have a good heel. A lot of these older shoes with the stiletto or the kitten heel, you'll find this little heel cap has been worn off and you've got like the little metal thing on the bottom that sticks through. And that's just, it's not worth fixing. And I wouldn't sell a shoe like that. Um, and then the other sh pair that I picked up again, classic, uh, these are black satin dressy with kind of like a lace, a lace cutout on them. And again, in perfect condition, also Stuart Weitzman, um, both of these shoes, again, probably 65, $75 range. And I paid maybe $2 a pair for them. Not even mm -hmm. those are smaller. 
Um, okay, two more things, uh, three more things that I picked up at the bins. I paid 25 cents a piece for these. They only charged me 25 cents a piece for board games and puzzles. I don't know why they don't do them by weight. It really depends on which uh, which uh, cashier you get, honestly. I think they're supposed to do them by weight. Um, but this particular cashier, I take them out and put them on the counter and she charged me 25 cents. So uh, these two puzzles. Probably because they assume that they're not going to be complete and maybe they're just being nice. Maybe. Uh, these two puzzles, this particular brand, take a look at these. Even used the Talking Jigsaw Puzzle. They're vintage. They're made by Buffalo Games, which is kind of a little bit of a boutique puzzle and board game making company. Why is that guy sitting in such a suggestive way? Um, I, I don't know. I didn't design him. Made in the USA. Just this saying. is vintage 1991. There are different topics of these things. They don't really talk. It just has words. I don't know why it says the talking. I, that's just what it's called. They're just it's just a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, so I paid 25 cents. This particular one sells for about 60, 65. Nice. And this one sells for about 50, 45 or $50. So I'm perfectly fine. Both of those. Um, I don't pick up all board, uh, all puzzles, but certain ones, if it's worth enough, I'll pick it up. This was a fun game that I picked up. I don't know if anybody remembers these Sky Dancers. These Sky Dancers um, were, if you want to Google Sky Dancers, this is a board game. It appears to be complete. It should sell for about $75 to $85. It's very rare. Um, but I will say that if you don't know anything about Sky Dancers, Sky Dancers were these were these things that came out late 80s, early 90s, something like that. You would squeeze the bottom and the little doll would go flying up in the air. It was almost like a little rocket. And it like a couple of them would like fly into like fires and they would poke people in the eye. It became a super huge hazard. So I think they pulled them off the market. So there probably wasn't a whole heck of a lot of marketing and additional materials that went out, which is why mm -hmm. I think makes this a rare board game. Mm -hmm. um, the, the game, the dolls themselves are pretty rare to find. Up, up you go on a sky high rescue adventure. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. They were the lawn, lawn darts of the 80s or 90s. I don't know if anybody remembers them, but you used to like squeeze a little, I don't know if it was the petals or if they came in a, a flower type thing. And then these little mm -hmm. dolls that had wings on them and they were like fairies. They would go Pew! and they would fly. Weird. <laughs> anyway, um, this is something I picked up just because of Allison. There you go. Also um, in the bins, super lightweight because this is like, um, like, I don't know, like carbon or titanium or whatever. I got some cool snowshoes for all the snowshoeing that happens yeah. here in Las Vegas. Um, but they're a good brand, uh, Electra. And I think I can get $75 to $100 for these. I haven't really looked up this particular. I like how it's got like one, seven but... different patents listed on the back. Like, I'm like, how many patents do you need for a pair of snowshoes? Apparently, seven. Apparently, a lot. So yeah, um, again, these are pretty lightweight. So I would say maybe under $5 I paid for these. Uh, some of the brand, some of the models go for like $150 and some of them go for under 50. I've got to do a little bit more research. I didn't really, I just quick glanced when I was at the mm -hmm. bins. So, um, and then I've got to figure out like what size and all that kind of stuff based on the model. But I think for under five bucks, it was a pretty good find. Yeah. So I was going to say uh, that snowshoes in Las Vegas, like it is kind of funny. However, I, we do have, we actually do have snow here. It's just, you have to go up in the mountain and Mount Charleston is only like, you can get there in like 45 minutes. So yeah, it's going to be even closer to us. So you, so it is possible that people actually do go snowshoeing here. It's just, it's not going to be in the city, but it is kind of funny when you think about like, why the heck are there snowshoes mm -hmm. in Las Vegas? Um, do you want me to keep going while you hold the dog? Yeah, we'll swap I got, entirely. I got the puppy. All right, so more bin stuff. I'm going to get into some clothes. That was pretty much it for the shoes and the hard goods, anything that was halfway decent. Yes, I remember the clackers. The heck were the they clackers? They were the super the hard tree. plastic balls that were about two to three inch in diameter, and they were on a rope. And the thing was to make them swing around and hit each other, and instead they would hit the beat the shit out of you. And yeah, that doesn't sound good. Poke, like, oh, they were awful. They were a freaking weapon. They were, <laughs> I absolutely remember those, <laughs> Kara. Um, all right, so, uh, this is a super cute 60s, 70s polyester, uh, blouse. So this is the top, this is the neckline. And then you've got these really cute big balloon sleeves with the ruffle. And then it's got a tie waist. So it'd be like right at the waist, very balloony, blousy shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but not a half shirt, but it would tie right at the at the waist. So super cute. Bins find. I will probably list this for like 75 to 85 bucks. Nice. Another 70s bins find. 70s polyester women's blouse with like um, polka dots in like a, a yellow and, or kind of like a yellowy beige uh, with these big, the big spread pointy 70s collar. My favorite. Um, these tend to go, little blouses like this tend to go for 35 to $45. These are crazy cool. These are crazy cool. These are women's. I wish they were men's. Men's would sell much faster and much better, but these are so cool. So I picked these up and they were heavily stained. However, uh, polyester is something that washes very, very well. And almost any stain can come out of true, true po vintage polyester. Mm -hmm. And this is, was no exception. These were disgusting. And I did a bathtub soup like Liz was talking about yesterday and soaked the heck out of them and then washed them and dried them. And then what had the water turn? Oh, it was black. But I think it was one sweater. It was a, There was one sweater that the dye yes, came out of entirely. And I just ended up throwing the sweater away. You you were showing me comps. And I think both of these shirts have better patterns on them than any of the ones that were in the comps, in my opinion. Yeah. So, but these are women's. Yeah. And those were men's. So this is the brand. It's a brand from the 70s made in Italy. These are Nick, Nick, Nick. N-I-K, N-I-K. These are like 60s, 70s, made in actually 70s with these collars, made in Italy, nylon polyester, and they have these fantastic patterns on them. Unfortunately, they're women's, and this is a small, but like this has got kids, like I don't know if they're at school or Let's something. The kids are on, looking at bleachers. Well, yeah, it's at school. school. They're in school. And then there's the teacher at the teacher's desk. It's just so fun. Mm -hmm. And then this one. I think it has an even cooler pattern. So here's the back of this one. Also women, same size. Um, it has this kind of like, I don't know. This, Western sort of. No, it's this family sitting at, maybe they're playing polo or something. It's not Western. It's equestrian. Okay. So it looks like a polo match maybe. Or what are they? What's Is that the, a wiener dog? Yes. And what's the one when they, when they, um, they go hunting with dogs on horses? Fox hunt? Yeah. This might be a fox hunt, but there's no fox. Just be based on the the picture of the guys on the horses. Hmm. Interesting. And they look like they're wearing like West, um, like British type of stuff. Oh. And there's a wiener dog on the back. Oh, well, it's a wiener dog on the back. Anyway, super cute. The brand, if you look at the brand, the um, men's shirts are are listed and selling for over a hundred dollars. These are, I didn't see very many women's, but I'm still going to list them. The patterns high, are just way better pattern. So I would still list them for as, yeah, the pattern, as much. The patterns are super cool. Okay. Uh, another bins find. Not a, I mean, you look at the brand and you're like, woo, but it's not a super huge, great find. But uh, vintage 80s uh, Burberry. So this is the the tag from 80s. It's Burberry's the, with the apostrophe mm -hmm. S. Um, it's just a men's oh, double breasted. Oh, my. Hit the navy, face. Sorry, baby. Um, men's double breasted navy blue, like blazer with the gold buttons with the emblem on the buttons. Um, kind of a boxy blazer. It may be purchased by a woman, um, but they do they do still sell for like the $50, $60 range. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not as great of a find as I thought it was gonna be. Fox hunt, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. That was what I was isn't that what I said? Yeah, that was what I was okay. leaning toward. Um this actually came from my secret honey hole. Yep. Katie's secret honey hole. She shows me a couple of things here and there that she thinks I might want. And we'll bit, you know, we, we try to get those. And this is uh, just a men's vintage seventies uh, Hawaiian shirt, great color and pattern. And here's the tag. This is why I love these. I love these tags, the old tags. This Look is at like that. full on polyester. Oh yeah. It's super thin polyester. Can you see that Waikiki yeah. holiday? Um, so I think I paid $10 for this. Mm -hmm. So I will list this one for about $75. And yes, Allison, that is a total Yacht Rock blazer. You are correct. Um, this is a bins find from yesterday. This was also pretty stained, but it's nice and clean now. I'm struggling with whether this is made to be something that someone wore kind of like a smoking jacket or if it's supposed to be a cover-up someone wears on the boat or if it's truly a bathrobe. 
Mm -hmm. I'm having, uh, yes, Burberry's is the same thing as Burberry. They just dropped the S and changed the logo after the 80s, Tommy. Um, Burberry's and Burberry are the same thing, same company. The name is different. Uh, okay, so here's the, this is this jacket. It's super heavyweight. It's a heavyweight cotton, which is what makes me feel like it's not a robe. It's just the fabric. But it's got this, again, Yacht Rock. It's got this nautical boats and ships it be like and a flags. long open jacket i i don't quite know but it has two pockets in the front and belt loops and a belt on it like it would be a belt it's like a woman would if wear it were not this if thing. it were not this fabric i would not think twice about it being a, mm -hmm. a robe so i'm not entirely sure let me get let me know what you think guys uh the sleeves are cuffed it has this great these great sailing and uh, designs and ship flags and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I don't really I don't know, know what the heck it is. I don't even know. I'll probably. That's what I was thinking too, Crystal. It could be a swim cover up, but it goes down like past the knees. I'm not quite sure. I, like a men's swim cover up, maybe, because it strikes mm -hmm. me as definitely more masculine than fem feminine. I don't know. I got to play with that and figure it out. I a little don't bit. Know. Um, just a few more things, I promise, and then Katie can move on. Um, this is from the bins as well. This is a downfilled reversible, um, just a, a vintage puffer vest, but it's by the company Golden Bear, which is a good, Maybe some good jackets, out, outwear, outerwear stuff, uh, good vintage brand. So I'm trying to find the tag to show you. I think it's made in Taiwan, isn't it? If you look that. I didn't look. Yep. Made in Taiwan. So it's like eighties. Um, I'll probably list it for like 75, maybe a hundred. Gail, I know it could be something men wear in expensive all men's clubs or a yacht club yeah. or something. I don't know. It just, it's a, it's a strange, I don't know how to describe it. It is literally the way the pockets and the belt loops are and the belt is placed. It is a robe, mm -hmm. but with a heavy, stiff cotton, which does not feel like a robe to me. And there's no other closure. So it's not like it's a. It's a dress or any other type of, I don't know how to describe that thing. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Just figure it out. Uh, okay. So a little scary what's happening right now. Uh, I picked this up at the bins. Again, the things that I pick up at the bins are after 75 people have torn through them like a bunch of rabid, angry wolves because I'm not getting into that mix and I don't want the same things they want. And guess what? I still find plenty of stuff every time. I can't believe you got that at the bins. This is a vintage, super heavy motorcycle jacket. Uh, the tags look to be maybe 60s, maybe 70s. Um, there's a kind of universal, but these will go for, it's got the super heavy, um, you know, talon zippers. This will go for $250. Mm -hmm. I might maybe paid 6 or $7 because it is pretty heavy, heavy yeah. leather. And... I picked up a bolt of Tommy Bahama fabric also in the bins. Um, so I paid six or seven dollars for this. Tommy Bahama fabric, I, it's not a full bolt, but it's definitely a few yards, mm -hmm. uh, several yards, maybe 10 or 12 yards. Um, I'm going to list it as is. I don't sell fabric by the yard. I don't want to be cutting fabric and shipping it. I don't care. I'm just going to sell it as the whole bolt. Someone else can buy it and resell it. They can buy it and make patio furniture. I don't care what to do with it. Um, let's see. This is uh, one more thing from the bins. I probably paid up for this one. I would say I probably paid about $10 based on the weight. This is a blanket. It's kind of, it's not chenille, but a lot of people will think it's chenille. It's kind of a popcorn bubble hobnail. Mm. Those are all the words that people use to describe it. Mm. And it has the fringe. It's at least queen size. I haven't measured it yet. It could be king. But it is made by a company called Bates. B-A-T-E-S. It's the same company that has a lot of patterns for sewing. Uh, so it's Bates. It's vintage. And it's a George Washington something pattern. Um, it is it is vintage. This is probably 70s. Some people have it dated way older than that. It's not. It's probably 70s, maybe early 80s. Uh, but depending on the size, this should sell for over $100. It's a really nice bedspread. 
It has not been washed either. So the fact that I have that on my lap is pretty skeevy. I've washed everything else. Um, I picked up a set of sheets that were kind of fun. Um, these were found in three different bins, which I'm, I'm surprised I found the fitted sheet, the flat sheet, and the pillowcase in three different bins. But uh, these are so 80s. These have like all different dinosaurs on them. There's the uh, Aerobosaurus, the Dancosaurus, the Choclosaurus, um, all these cute little the 80s. Aerob the Aerobosaurus is foxy. It's pretty funny. Uh, the difference between that bedspread and chenille, uh, Kara, is that chenille is a softer fabric. I don't really oh. know how else to describe it. And chenille is a different, um, it's kind of fuzzy, like the fabric and the, and it's usually got a raised fuzzy pattern and that's not fuzzy, but you can find hobnail blankets that are chenille. That one just isn't. It's hard to describe it in words, but someone that sees it in person or touches it will know the difference. Mm -hmm. So anyway, these, um. These sheets are pretty funny. Um, and I'm kind of excited. So 1986 Talking nice. Tops is the brand. And um, they have this in boys, boy dinosaurs that are sports. I haven't found them with the girl dinosaurs yet. And Barbara, it could be Bicentennial, Bates Bicentennial. It's very well, it could be. Um, Allison says she turned Casey on to Yacht Rock on Amazon Music. And uh, I just want to say thank you for the work you're doing, introducing Yacht Rock to the youths. To the youngins. Because, you know, Casey's about 17 compared to Allison is like, what, 60? That was a little low. I love you, Allison. She's a liar. <laughs> uh, and, and then, so Corey's in the chat. So Corey will be the one, first one to tell you, I am talking myself out of buying cute vintage kids clothing every damn time I'm at the bins because it is a very slow seller, but I cannot resist uh. when they are so freaking cute. I can't resist. Um, and yeah. that one though, I think you can get some real money for. So uh, the little coveralls. So this, this one is a vintage. This is very much in the style of gunny sacks, cottage core, prairie core, all that happy horse shit, but a little kid's so dress. Rude. It's a little girl's toddler dress um, and it's all of those things and super cute. So this may sell just because of that. Uh, again, bins, I don't want to price it at 40, 50 bucks. Do you take it home to your child and you say, here's some horse shit I bought you to wear. Mm -hmm. Yep. I said, happy horse shit. Come here's on some now. happy horse shit for you to wear. Yeah. Polly Flinders is entirely different, Gail. I would pick up Polly Flinders all day long. And Polly Flinders sells based on the name and the style. It's very recognizable. As does Kids Gunny Sacks, as does a couple of different brands. But the non-branded vintage kids clothing is definitely harder to sell, although I have a ton of it. Mm -hmm. uh, ask Crystal because she's done the photos and descriptions for most of them. This is really cute. This one I couldn't put down either. These are very 70s. Um, little bib overalls in, um, in, in, a uh, baby yellow with like this little fuzzy, I don't know, animal on it. It looks like it was supposed to be a rabbit. I think it's a rabbit. Uh -oh. No, it's a lion. Uh oh. <laughs> it's a little lion with a little fuzzy head. Anyway, uh -oh. I had to get them. They've got the little snap crotch on them. So they're probably like a size six months. I don't know anybody has any little girls or I'd be gifting them with all this stuff. Okay. My last find, which is probably my favorite find of the week, and it's not even the most expensive one, but I was so excited to find this and shocked that it actually got to the bins after being on the sales floor. First of all, it has a Goodwill tag on it. So it was on the sales floor for $2.49 that no one ever purchased. Yeah, that's crazy. So we've got some vintage... Made in the USA, Oshkosh Bagash, toddler overalls with the vest back. And they're red, and they've got the cutest little teddy bears and sailboats on them. And they're made in the USA. They're in pristine condition. Now, you don't get quite as much for these as you do for the ones that are, say, like, um, like the railroad engineer stripes, the pinstripe ones, or uh, even just plain um denim ones but i think i can definitely get 75 to 100 dollars for them mm -hmm. between ebay or etsy and that is my haul for yeah. the week 
That's this baby's real week. sleepy. All right. Uh, Kelly says, put that dress up with Easter as a key. Yeah, you're assuming I'm going to get it listed by Easter, Kelly. <laughs> I may. Right, you gotta go this I don't know Look because of she is. She's so sleepy. I don't know just because of our move. <laughs> this puppy is so wild when she's not sleeping. She is so wild. She's very cuddly and sweet and, and for sure and loving, but she's such a wild, like full of energy dog. But it's like we have trained her that when we're sitting in front of the computer, whether we're working or doing the show, she can't go anywhere, so she just has to be quiet. And seriously, it's like she's just been like drifting mm -hmm. off to sleep this entire time. Like she gets because you take her to your office and put her on your lap, and she just goes mm -hmm. to sleep. Mid afternoon, she's very, very, very quiet and sleepy. And late morning, those are her two times. Yeah. So she's just like so cuddly right now. All right. So that's all of my crap. Yeah. Uh, all of my best that. crap of the week. Which, and by the way, she's whoop, whoop, whoop. oh, yeah. she's squirrely. She's eight pounds now, guys. Eight she pounds. Is. I think she's at most will top out at like nine pounds, but she's up to, to eight pounds now. So, okay. So the majority, almost all this stuff is from my secret online honey hole. And I'm going to start off with one of my favorite things I've gotten from there. And this one, so I've already bleached it. It didn't really do a whole lot. Um, this is a quantum leap t-shirt from, this is, I nice still love that show. Well, the artwork says 90, and then down below it says 1989. But uh, I love Quantum Leap. I think it's a great show. It's was really it fun. even still on that late in the, what, that late? Yes. I thought yes. that was much earlier for yeah. some reason. It was like 80s into the early, very Scott early 90s. Scott Bakula. Um, anyway, it, I already had to have, so I paid 30 for it. Um, I actually had to have uh, um, Crystal do a repair on it because the entire sleeve was split on the seam. But I love it when I get something where that's the only issue because she's really good and she can easily fix the seam. But, but your bleach did not get out all the... I don't know if it's like... What kind of colors that is? I dye or something? It was like tar dye. I don't you know? know. I'm going to have to try, see if I can soak it in some oxyclean. I think I can still sell it and make some money, but... Ooh, I don't Tommy know said the they're hell. bringing back Quantum Leap. Ooh, that would be yeah. apropos. Yeah. Anyway, so still a great shirt. Um, so I'm $35 in at this point. Um, I'm going to see if I can get the standing out. Puppy likes it. She wants to sniff it. Um, but I was I was excited about this because I'm a sci-fi nerd. and uh, I hate like sci-fi, but I love that show. I mean, the show, it's not super sci It's just the, That's probably why I liked it. It wasn't sci-fi. What do you call it? The framework? The time hop thing. The framework of the show, was, the gimmick of the show was mm -hmm. technically sci-fi, but the show itself was not for the most part. Anyway. So I got that. Um, I need to see if I can get into better shape, a little bit better shape. Um, most of these things, like when I buy, I'll buy like a bundle and I'm usually averaging about $12 to $13 per piece. Some pieces I'm always paying five bucks for, some I'm paying 20 bucks for, it just kind of depends. So this is probably one that I, I paid like maybe five bucks for. And uh, this is, it's just the, the biking, the triathlon t-shirt, but I like the, it's from 1984. I like the graphic on it. It's just a plain white t-shirt and probably pay like five bucks for it. But I'll sell that probably for I don't know, around 60 bucks, 50, 60 bucks. I'm going to move this over here. Jill said you could dye that quantum leap shirt. You you could. Yeah. But it's black. But... You'd have to dye it black. And I don't know if you would get enough. Or a color. Or some ruin, color. The, I, yeah, ruin I the actual print on it. That's the only problem. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't want to dye it. I, don't really I guess you could tie dye it. I don't really but... want to get into that though. Everybody right. does that. Everybody takes shitty shirts from the from the bins and decides they're going to tie dye it, and they call it art, and they, it's a vintage, yeah. upcycled tie dye, and everybody's selling them, and oh, so much of it. I cut off this little dangly here. Whoops. Um. Anyway, next up, I have this is another one that I paid up for. I think I ended up paying thirty dollars for it. But if you guys remember, I've sold this same shirt, and I think this is the doctor one. I've sold the pharmacy one. I've sold both of them for like around two hundred bucks. They actually do sell really well. Um, this one's very small. It's a it's a medium. It's small. I could fit one boob in that shirt. Okay, so that's a very early early eighties Hanes tag. late seventies early eighties Hanes tag. Seventy eight. It says on the shirt. Right. I know the shirt says seventy eight. That's the design. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so it's pretty small. It's definitely a small. But I paid like 30 bucks for it. I should be able to still get minimum a hundred, but we'll see. I don't know. I don't know who the heck is wearing them like this. Like it's just a weird 
Oh, yeah. Allison, I'm with you. 1883 and Yellowstone. Oh my God, we love them both. Oh, yes, love both. I'm loving 1883, which I think we have. I think I like. We it. have a new episode to watch. For... She just said the finale oh. tonight. Yeah, we're excited about it. All right. Speaking of all those surfer t-shirts, I got a couple more, and these ones I think I paid like seven fifty for. Um, this one's just kind of a great, almost like a snakeskin kind of design, tire tread slash snakeskin. Um, but again, I call these surfer. Um, there's a little wear around the collar. You can see kind of like holes in the, the collar, but I don't care. So Yaya or Jaja, I'm not sure which that is. So we're one of the first people who tie dyed stuff from the bins. Pro tie dyer for 25 years. Everyone copied us. Yeah, it's probably true. Uh, you know, it's been being done now. That's for, a smart thing it's, to it's, do. It's, it's definitely a big thing in the streetwear upcycling community. I think the tie dyeing stuff that is not streetwear looks and retains value and um, desirability a lot more, if that makes sense. That's my personal thought, because I think that the, the a lot of people that are doing the tie dyeing um, on two stained types of shirts like that um, are not necessarily very good at tie dyeing. So it, it just ends up looking like crap. And I don't think it does anything. They're doing it to hide stains and flaws. And I don't think yeah. it adds any value to the, to the piece. I so think it looks like I'm shit. not a tie dyer. I've done it like once or twice when not really knowing what I'm doing. I don't have any interest in becoming a tie dyer. Um, and I think it looks great on some shirts and it totally is an awesome idea, but I think some people do it on stuff. Like I feel like on that, on that quantum leap, it would, it wouldn't look good. And so mm -hmm. it's, I love tie dyeing that's done on nice pieces. I bet I actually would like to see it. Yeah. Tie dye couture. I was just going to say, I would like to see it on really fun, different pieces. I'm going to try to, if you, can you send a link to your site after this? Or to your, I, I, I can't save you on Instagram right now because we're in the middle of the show, but the anti-culture, mm -hmm. um, I would really like to see some of your stuff because that's the kind of stuff that I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well done tie dye is interesting. For sure. Some I think there's far too much of it that looks like total garbage. It's muddy that is and everywhere, brown. And... and it's unfortunate because it takes away from the stuff that's really good. It's almost like shabby chic furniture, right? The whole distressing and painting furniture. Everybody thinks they can take a white paintbrush and, and some sandpaper yeah. and take a piece of furniture and sell it for $500. And it's not true. There there's some really done, really nicely well done pieces that have been done in the past 15 years when it first started. And then there are some really shitty pieces and people think they're great. And what it's done is it the, the really shitty pieces have devalued the really good pieces. Well, and I get super bummed because it's like I go to source and it's like there's a whole bunch that have been tie dyed very poorly. And there's shirts that the design is something I wish I could have bought when it was white, even if it was stained. And I feel like it's now it's completely ruined. But I, I do really like when they do like the reverse tie dye where it's like starts with a black t-shirt and they like use like bleach and colors and stuff like that to do some really cool stuff. So yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So let me oh, yeah, I definitely want to go check out your stuff. That's thanks for popping into the chat. Yeah, for sure. I've never seen you in the chat before. Um, I think that's awesome. So again, I paid like five bucks, maybe seven fifty for this, and I will sell it for easily fifty dollars, maybe a little more. Um, well, I think if you dye cashmere, just don't tie dye cashmere. Yeah, would be my guess because it's gonna bleed. Yeah. All right. Then I've got this sweet, uh, probably seventies, early eighties Michelob oh, that one's t-shirt. It's pretty tiny, but um, I still love it. I don't care. Hi, little puppy. Why is you so cute? Um, another surfer esque t-shirt, and this one actually has like a, a shell design, um, all over the whole thing. So this one, it's the color and the, on the screen is showing a little bit, like almost like it almost hurts your eyes. Like at least where I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like that a, in person. It's purple and teal. It looks better in person. This one. Oh, if someone else in the chat, Constant says for over 10 years, I tie dye baby onesies and match a pair of socks. And a oh, that's really cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's See, really if cute. I had a little kid or when I have a grandkid, I would buy that. Let me tell you, I love the tie dye thing. I just think a lot of people don't know how to do it and they, uh, I tie dye every summer at summer market. camp. I'm a camp counselor. I do it every summer at summer camp. I'm going to tell you my little tie dye pieces look like shit because I am not a good tie dyer. <laughs> I do it with my kids and my yeah. stuff looks marginally better than my six-year-olds. Mm -hmm. These little fuzzies right here. These little fuzzies. Hi. Okay, show your stuff. All right. Next up, uh, I love this sweatshirt. I think this one I paid like $15 for and it's in really good condition, almost brand new condition um, on a jerseys tag. Mm -hmm. Uh, right there. So this jerseys tag, this could be late 80s, could be early 90s, but you see how it's got the 
the 46 in, with the XL. Um, that 46 goes away later in the 90s. You don't really see it at all on tags as much. Um, so it's possible this one's from the 80s. But it's uh, Minolta. Is it Minolta? I Minolta. Say it? Focus of the Future. It's a camera. So it's just like a promo sweatshirt. But I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I like, you know, I like anything vintage tech. And to me, cameras, I, I would say cameras are tech. It's not just computers. Mm -hmm. um, so I like stuff like this. And especially when you've got stuff where you have people who are hardcore fans or enthusiasts or professionals or whatever. Maybe they use this brand and they would really like to find like a, um, a vintage piece. So again, I paid like 15 bucks for it. I'll probably price this at like a hundred um, and, you know, the, be open for offers and stuff like that. Um, so East Coast Surfer, yes, we are doing camp this year. Um, camp mm -hmm. is in person this year and it's back to normal, uh, as normal as a bunch of kids at a burn summer camp are. Uh, but yeah, it's back to normal. So we, we didn't have camp in 2020. Mm -hmm. We were virtual because of COVID and it was horrible. Uh, we did the best we could, but virtual camp is, is not fun. And it was really hard not getting the kids together. And then last year, we just had so much going on that we actually decided to skip a year. It was not virtual, yeah. but we were at about 50% attendance. And there were a lot of rules in place as far, as, as far as the cohorts and the groups and the masks. And it was for me, I was like, this is not summer camp. I'd rather come back when it's normal. We didn't think they so. desperately needed us. And we felt like the restrictions were going to make the experience not what we wanted it to be. Okay, Janine, I recognize your name. Thank you. It was just your... Um, I, Janine Gordon, I, I absolutely recognize that. Oh, name. Okay. I just didn't recognize your uh, your YouTube. So so thanks for clarifying. It's tough because so many people have a completely different YouTube uh, you know handle than they do on Instagram than they do in Facebook, which is generally your, your real life name. It gets confusing. Yeah. So thanks for clarifying. She's like falling asleep in your arms. All right. Next up, I have this awesome T-shirt from the world's oldest water ski race. I don't know anything about this, but I love this design. That graphic's fun. This is from 1991, Lake Mead, the 5075 water ski race. Uh, this is actually the back of it, and it's got, as they say, a front hit, because this is, as the kids say, as the youth say, a mullet. Um, single stitch. Uh, it's from 1991. Again, this is how I tell you guys to learn your tags. So this tag, you're going to see it more often on 80s t-shirts. But again, when you're printing on blanks, you know, this was from 1991. They could have had like a back stock of Hanes t-shirts at the t-shirt factory. And uh, they put this one in 1991. So you're not only going to see this tag on 80s t-shirts. You might see it on 90s t-shirts. Mm -hmm. But it's generally going to be early 90s. Um, next up, I love this shirt. Vicky thinks it's referring to like watches. I, I When I got it, I was like, oh, that's like the keyboard. I don't know. I guess it was probably their, um, it was probably their tagline for across their... I didn't look. I'm sure you can look it up and find out. Yeah. But anyway, got to have a key, got to have a Casio. So again, vintage tech. I'm hoping it's for the little keyboard kind of thing. So I think that's funny. Um, the tag is pretty <laughs> worn and faded, but this looks very 80s to me. Um, I'm laughing at Allison. Nikki was... attended their very first water ski race. <laughs> I was did. a judge. She was a judge. I had already, I had already retired. She was a judge. <laughs> That's pretty good. Anyway, gotta have a Casio. Love it. Uh, Almost done, you guys. I'm almost done. Allison, you I, have, I didn't get a ton of stuff this week because I didn't go to yesterday's fits. This is just from a little um, bundle of stuff that I got from my honey hole. All right, next up, this is a Pipeline t-shirt. It's a, it's a, a surf t-shirt. It says, uh, see no, hear no, speak no, the evil bros. And uh, so it's just kind of a I'm fun little... I'm surprised the t-shirt bro didn't buy a shirt that says bro. Yeah, or is right. it they don't call themselves bro, we just call them bros? bros. Uh, no, they call each other bro. All How right. many messages do I get where they're like, bro, bro, or bruh, bro, bruh. They usually say bro. They don't do bro. Um, all right. And then I want to show one thing. I got a few things at the bins when I went with Vicky. I got a couple of vintage Christmas things, and that's, this, that's what this is. And I got some t-shirts that were kind of okay. This is 80s, though, and this is one of the Christmas things, but I think it's actually a really cool sweatshirt. Um, it's on this bassett walker tag and i've seen this on um 80s sweatshirts before so that's where how i'm how i'm dating it based on the design it's kind of the uh what do they call it the raglan design on a sweatshirt um and it's all solid one color uh, but this just says merry christmas and then it's got all the reindeer on it that's and their names cute. i think this is a really cute vintage sweatshirt if that were bigger i'd wear that and uh well, I didn't pay anything for it because Vicky paid for it, but that was the cost of her getting me to go 
wake up at 6 30 in the morning on a Saturday when I was looking forward to sleeping in and going to the bins is that she had to pay the probably maybe like four or five bucks all total for all the random things that I picked up. So that's the way it goes. And then the last thing, Vicky didn't show this. Uh, she got this the day she went to the bins without me. And when she was showing me all the stuff that she got, I saw this hidden, hidden amongst the stuff. And I was like, um, that's a, and I knew what, exactly what it was, just with a little bit I saw. So I'm going to see who's going to answer first and tell us and what. And Corey, my initial thought of what it was, we were both wrong, by the way. I want, oh, I want to hear that too in a minute. I want to see who answers first. I'm going to show this here in a second, guys. Who answers first what this is? Because the second I saw it, and I and Vicki will attest to the fact that I was immediately correct about what it was. Um, even though I'd say it's not really the right color, but uh, here we go. What is it, guys? Tell us what the, what is this? Getting it to focus. It's focused now. Tell us what it is. I saw this and I was super excited. And then she said, "I got that for you." I don't know if she really did or if she looked it up and realized she couldn't make any money on it and said I could have it because she would do that, you guys. Rude. Yep, it's true. All right, guys. So what is it? Uh, dope. It's not amoeba. It's not an amoeba. Was not a scorpion. Kind of looks like a scorpion, doesn't it? Sort mm -hmm. of. Uh, Tommy got it. Tommy got it. But what is it? Tommy it's, and Sandy. What is it? It is from Alien and Aliens. But what is it? Um, I saw it. It's not a crab. So it's Alien or Aliens. And it actually does have the tag on. It's an official Alien kind of merch thing. It's not vintage. It's probably from like within the last 10 years or so. But not. A, it's, it's called a face hugger guys but look at how cute it is look at its little face it's so happy <laughs> elephant with dreadlocks <laughs> <laughs> anyway they call it face huggers guys uh look at how cute it is look at it's it's so happy and joyful to be alive to go inside your body because in the movie they hook on your face they impregnate you they implant an alien inside of you inside your chest cavity and then as it matures it bursts out your chest guys gross so, gross yep this is not a chest person. Yeah, I thought it hunter. was one of those plushies that is, there is a bunch of different like um, organisms and germs and things that they mm -hmm. have plush from. And they actually, they sell for pretty decent money. I haven't seen any in a while. When I first grabbed it, I thought that was what it was. Because I think I paid like, I don't know, 20 yeah. cents for it, 25 cents for it. I saw like this much of it poking out from like under a blanket or something. And I'm like, is that a face hugger? Even though it's yellow, it should probably be a little more like greenish brown. But um, anyway, and then when I turned it over, it made me giggle. And she said, I got to keep it. It's all for me. So. And hey, Kelly, hip flipping mama. Thanks yeah, for popping flipping in. mama. All right. Oh, this baby's so sleepy. You so sleepy. You so cute. She's such a good girl. She's making it look like we have like the calmest, chillest little baby. But let me tell you, she gets crazy. Mm -hmm. She gets crazy. Well, we are. I mean, that's it. I don't have to go get. Ripley, because she's been here for the last hour. So all you've right. all been seeing her already. Mm -hmm. She's sleepy. And uh, that's it. That's all we got. That's all we got, guys. Yes, Kim. Giant microbes. Thank you. Uh, I, I didn't look, but I, I just remembered that I've seen them and sold them before. But yes, mm -hmm. that was what I thought it was. Off the top of my head, when I grabbed some random crap, I was like, oh, it's got to be one of those germ things. I didn't look at the tag. I'm trying to get the baby to show her face better. <laughs> look how cute she is. She's so cute. She's so cute. And sometimes like her, sometimes this one year will just be totally up. Well, not back, but it's like, it just stays up, but then it'll be down for a week and then it'll be up for a few days. So we don't really know if that's ever going to like be up permanently, but she likes to that's it. move around funny. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later and hopefully we should be having a show next week. But again, these next few weeks, this next like month and a half. Month, We're going to have a show next week. Yeah, we should have a show next week. But the but things are going to, depending on what happens um, and what dates we're doing, different things and having to get ready in crunch time, that we probably will miss a couple of shows at some point. So yeah, for sure. Anyway. Um, yeah. So what is giant microbes? Let's see, there's something or the question there, but I don't know. What? I, I lost. The I show's lost over. It. We're anyway, wrapping up. Yeah, show's over. We will see you next Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us yep. for an hour and 45 minutes. We had over 135 people at one point, uh, which is pretty much our huge around yep. 125 to 135. Um, thanks. Hit the thumbs up on the way out if you'd like. Thanks, guys. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. 
Yeah. And uh, we'll see we'll you soon. That. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.